Now I'd like to invite up the extraordinary change makers of the Andean Cat Alliance. Where are you? Rocio and Bernardo. They're making their way up. The Andean cat has been considered sacred by native communities, and it still is considered sacred by native communities. It makes sense. You would wonder why this cat and not, not other small cats, but it makes sense because this cat has very specific adaptations for its landscape. And it also is very rare ecologically. So finding this cat in the wild is a mystical moment, and it still is for everybody. But it went beyond that. The Andean cat was the one responsible, the creature responsible, to transverse between planes of existence. The Andean cat was the one that would take the message from humans to the Apus, the protectors of the earth, the spirit of the mountains. And it makes a lot of sense that these species represent this landscape in such a deep, deep way. When we started working together in the Andean Cat Alliance 20 something years ago, we knew we were up for a huge challenge because this cat lives in very um, hard to get areas. Usually in that time, it was very high elevations. But we were up to the challenge. So we started working together in all the distribution of the species, from Peru, through Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina, where the cat also expands to the flatlands of Patagonia. At first, there was nothing, absolutely anything known about these species. So we started doing a lot of research work. We started unraveling all the mysteries around it, trying to understand basic biology needs of the cat, basic ecological needs of the cat, and more importantly, what the conservation threats were. And while doing this, we came to realize that the cats were disappearing while we were gathering this information. So we start moving on and on into developing conservation interventions until we reach the point now that we have five very strong programs that has been conceived from the very beginning to address these conservation threats globally, but customize them to each community. And I know this is a mouthful, so just let me provide an example of how we work with these communities. When we approach a new community, you start a conversation. You don't know these people, they don't know you, they don't know where you come of covering cats to talk about with them. And, and suddenly, one, one, a lot of hours and a lot of matters later, some issue may ar arise. Like, for instance, this community, had a problem with pumas getting close to their houses. This is a very, very nice, very ecologically friendly community. They love their natural surroundings. They will never kill a puma. They don't want to kill the pumas. But they were worried because of drought. Uh, a lot of native herbivores died, so the pumas didn't have food. So they came close to the houses. So they were worried, really worried. Pumas were walking in their backyards. They were worried because of their kids, because of their dogs, and because of their livestock. So we work with them, we tell them, okay, this is your problem, let me show you this. These things work in other communities. We can improve your corrals, we can uh, give you uh, the tiring lights or the tiring machines that make sounds. What do you want to try? And then we work really closely with them to try to implement these actions in the way that they feel more comfortable with. 
And this is key, because while doing this, you develop relationships and other opportunities for conservation actions arise. For instance, you get to meet the people from the school, from the local school, the director from the school, and he wants the ANECA to be included in the curriculum. So you work with him, and you, get, you start doing all the, the education actions that our educational program has done. And then you find out that there is an artisan community, you know, group of women. And when they hear about the Andean Cat, you approach and you show them one of our handcrafts. We have a lot of beautiful hand handcrafts. Visit our booth afterwards. <laughs> and, and these ladies start, you know, it's not only that they want to be trained to be better saleswomen, they also start understanding that they become part of a network of artisans in right now three different countries producing um, materials that are inspired in the Andean Cat. And they become Andean Cat ambassadors and they wear a vest and they're so proud of it. And when they go to the fairs, they talk with the tourists about Andean Cats. So it is a very, very powerful approach. In another community, it, may, it happened. This is happening. This happened in another different community, but it, it could happen in this one. Sometimes you can visit somebody, and the person will be very sad because he had to put down his dog because it has rabies, for instance. Rabies is still a thing in South America. Or maybe feral dogs attacked his livestock. Or as what happened in this community, feral dogs killed an Andean cat. So these people reach out to us. We work with them in a different program. But they reach out to us and they said, this population of dogs is damaging our livestock and we saw them kill an Andean cat. What can we do? So these two are huge conservation issues for the Andean cat that activate our One Health approach. So we start working with the local leaders, developing um, responsible ownership programs, vaccination campaigns, and if they're up for the long run, we can even you know, start working in Spain and neutering the, their pets. But only if the community is willing to. We never impose. So, as you can imagine, this is a very, very successful approach because it literally changes people's lives in the moment. And it changes people's lives, not just because the cat is in their vicinity. It's because they are willing to protect the cat that it's in their vicinity. And that is very, that is very, very powerful. But, and sadly, there is a but. The huge, the biggest challenge we have right now is we don't have enough people. What I have just shown is an approach that takes a lot of time, as you can imagine. Visiting these communities, talking with them, working with them, takes a lot of time. And what I just show you is usually done by one person, maybe with a couple of volunteers, that it's only being paid for one-fourth of his or her time. So that's a day a week, five days like a month, it's it's really, really small amount of time that they can really dedicate. Even when we still have a lot of people volunteering in the Andean Cat Alliance, we need to speed up. There are less than 1,400 adult Andean cats in the wild, and there are certain threats that are strongly increasing. We do trust a lot in our team. And, and we have highly committed people, as, as my guest here today, Bernardo Segura from Chile. <laughs> Bernardo has a fantastic story, story to tell that he is doing on his own time. Yeah, I came from Chile, and I've been working with the Andean cat in a lot of places. But there's this place that is really special, and it's really close to my heart, and I want you all to, to, to see today. I came from Santiago, the capital of Chile, which is a huge city. 
uh, 7 million people live there, about 40% of the entire population of the country. As in most cities, the people is really concerned about their daily lives, making a life, and doesn't have the time usually to look at the mountains. In Santiago, we have a beautiful landscape. As you can see, the mountains are, are right uh, close to the city. This, this, this view is actually the view from my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> that view. And I see the mountains every day with awe and curiosity. They have been Andean cut records in this region, but not uh, that close to the city, always deeper into the mountains. They stretch all the way to Argentina. Uh, the place is close to Santiago, but it doesn't mean that it's easy to get there. As you can see, the mountains are really steep, really with ro loose rocks, so it's, it has been a really physically demanding and dangerous field work. The place is also quite different from the classical habitat, habitat, uh, Andean cut habitat. So we went up to the mountains many times, a dozen of times, a dozen times, to install the trail cameras in these kind of environments. And we, what, we, what we just saw there was different from what we have expected. It was a magical place, really pristine, even so close to a city. Sometimes when we go up, Santiago is fully clouded, and we get to the cameras, and we get to see the clouds for above covering the entire city. It's amazing. And many times also we came down by night, so we are greeted with these kind of views. The, the, this place is, well, quite different from the classical habitat environment, but we found one creature that gave us hope that maybe the Andean cat could live there. It was the Vizcacha. The Vizcacha is a large-sized rodent, about bigger than a rabbit, that is really agile. It's specialized to live in among these rocks. It can jump through the rock with ease, and is the main prey of the Andean cat. It's incredibly agile. <laughs> so after we found the Vizcacha, we think, well, perhaps we are in, uh, in putting the cameras in the right place. After a couple of months, we came to visit the, the place, and we got this picture. The first picture of an Andean cat so close to, to a big city. As you can see, the picture is not that good, but the long tail is, is clearly an Andean cat. We were blown away by this picture because I've, I have been working with this species for a long time. I always go to remote places, take a plane, and it's really hard to get to the Andean cut places. But this mountain is the mountain that I look every day from my apartment. So it was, it still blows my mind. So after this, we put a lot of check cameras, many, many check cameras because well, it's actually a quite perfect place to start because we can go by, by the day. And we, we're, we're trying to know everything about this new and exciting population. What we, what we got was surprising. Sometimes this species is so rare that having like a blurry photo of a tail is like motives for celebration. But here we're having this amazing day-like video. This, this one is, I think, is the dominant male of the area that is marking. So the results have been amazing. Even more than when I go to the remote, remote places, this place is, I think, it, it has more, more Andean cat, and they are all really healthy. But it gets even better. Pay attention to it. Look closely. You are, yeah, we got a baby onion cut. It was far beyond all our wildest expectations. I think these are the best Andean cat uh, baby videos that I have ever seen. And, and I can see this place from my apartment, so it's in <laughs> incredible. <laughs> yeah. 
This, this kitten is just a couple of months old. It's struggling with, with the rocks. It's very stumbled a lot, as you can see here. <laughs> and after this video, we were really happy, and we prepared just, like, to, to follow the entire life of the kitten. We put more tree cameras. But unfortunately, we didn't get any more videos about the kitten for many months. We thought that maybe the kitten didn't make it because, you know, nature is really hard on baby animals. There are a lot of foxes there, dogs, and even the clips can be dangerous for, for a kitten this size. A couple of months, uh, we, going to, 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 we went to check the cameras, and we got this. Yeah, the, cat, the kitten was alive, and as it was really big, almost as big as its mother. So it's amazing. You can see there that and then cat uses these passages in, uh, in the cliffs, and this is really hard to get. I have tried to put a camera there in this passage, but it's impossible, like really, really difficult. <laughs> so hard. And you can see that the Andenkant uses its long tail to balance itself in these steep environments. You may say, how do we know that this kitten is the same as the little kitten that we just saw? Th that's because that's the kitten. The tail has this unique marking that there are like fingerprints. So we can know for sure that this is the same kitten. You can see now it is now way bigger and way more confidence. <laughs> <laughs> So as I told you, every, every individual has his own marking. In the top left corner, you see this is the, the dominant male. And he has like a partial ring in one of the, one of the rings is like partial. This, that is unique for, from that individual. And we have identified between four and five adults in this area, and one, and one kitten also. So this has been an incredible journey, has been amazing. Uh, to be able to study the, this species in this area, also to have this, this kitten, and to know that all of these videos that you saw, all the tender videos, are happening just in the backyard of an uh, 8 million people city. Thank you. Mind-blowing, huh? You were not expecting all those cat videos. <laughs> I want to say that Bernardo, and I want to highlight, he has been doing all of this on his own personal time. Uh, he's not just uh, very good in his, in his profession, he's also a father, and he's also a son, and he's also a friend. So, he, you know, we have a life. And it's hard when you cannot provide enough support to a person like him, or a lot, a lot of other Andean Cat members that work mostly as volunteers. I hope, I, I, I wish, I, well, I don't know, maybe some of you know about this concept, the concept of ikigai, that it's, it's, it's I think it's Japanese. It's a concept of like the, like the higher realization you can have in your life. It's the combination of these four circles, what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. If you reach all that, the centers of that circle, you reach your, your something bigger than your mission. It's like a full plenitude state. And I really think, after knowing the people from the Andean Cat Alliance for such a long time, that they are good at what they are, that the world needs their work, and that they, they are absolutely love the Andean cat. The Andean cat, I think, represent our ikigai in, Andean cat, in the Andean Cat Alliance. So I strongly believe that we need to support more people in the field. We are running out of time. Lithium mining is coming 
out and strong to the areas where the Andean cat is. The biggest lithium mine deposit in the planet is in the triple, triple frontier between Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina. So we need to work with the communities for them to stay there because they are the strongest conservation ambassadors we can ever have. We also have to plan differently and start working with corporations, you know, trying to make them do things right. But it's very important for us, to the community to be there, so we need to get people to make their lives easier. And with that, I want to thank you all. We have been doing so well on these past years, thanks to the supporters that have been here, thanks to WCN and Charlie's vision all those years ago. So thank you very much. And, and thank you. Thank you.